Good morning, church family. Glad you're here. Welcome to Facebook Online. Just so you know, we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, we will have that down in the links. You can check the channel and you can share that with your friends and family for the message that's going on this week. So uh, some announcements going on. There's everything at the campus is still uh, postponed and canceled, but there's still a lot of Zoom uh, stuff going on. So contact all your leaders from Bible studies. I know uh, Pastor Tim has several things going on Zoom. I know Daryl has stuff going on Zoom, so make sure you get those just um, lined up so you can get on those messages. Also, remember, uh, you, uh, giving is still available. You can give online. Uh, that link will be down below in the comments shortly. Uh, also, you can uh, mail your check into the church. Uh, the address will be the, down there as well. So before we get into this morning's message, uh, let's say a word of prayer. Dear gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this wonderful, beautiful morning. Help us to know that we are loved and cared for. Help us to, to know even though we are closed off in our houses, you are near to us. Help us to find ways to draw near to each other during this time and care for each other. Uh, help us to be concerned for our neighbor. Uh, help us to practice safe practices. And help us to, to use this time, this maybe this downtime, to draw closer to you. Uh, to spend more time in your word and your prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so this morning's message is going to come to you from Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, Isaiah is one of my favorite books, uh, so much so I named my son uh, Isaiah. Love the book. So turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, the link will be down below as well, but you can turn your Bibles there. So Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to read that whole chapter. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain shall be made low. The rough ground shall be made level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be re revealed, and all the people will see it together. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I, and I said, what shall I cry? All the people are like grass, and all the faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord has blown on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go to a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift your voice with a shout, lift it up, do not be afraid, says the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompenses and accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that are young, who has the measure, the waters in the hollow in his hand, or the breath of his hand marked of the heavens, who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in the balance, who can fathom the spirit of the Lord or instruct the Lord in his counselor, who did the Lord counsel to enlighten him and who taught him the right way, who was who that taught him his knowledge or showed him the path of understanding. Sure, the nations are like a drop in the bucket. They are regarded as dust in the scales, he weighs the islands as though they were false dust, nor uh, its animals enough for burnt offerings before the nations are nothing. They are regarded to him by worthless. I'm going to skip down to verse 27. Who do you complain? Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by God. Do you know, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of all things of the earth. He will grow tired or weary. He will not grow tired or weary. In his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. Will renew their strength. They will soar on winds like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Isaiah chapter 40. One of my favorite verses in there. The Lord is worth waiting on. The Lord is worth waiting on for. 
where we used to live back in Lindsay and Portable area, uh, they used to have some pretty amazing parades. Uh, we have some parades here. They're okay in Lancaster and Palmdale, but everybody showed up in, in Lindsay and Portable for the parades. My kids loved it. There were cars and floats and all kinds of things going on. And usually at the end of the parades, there was either Santa or something huge, and all the kids were always waiting in anticipation for the end of the parade. But one thing that was always nerve-wracking for me is I have one daughter, Georgia. Hi, Georgia. I'm sure you've seen me. Uh, does not like loud noises. And during every single parade, there's always a siren going on, whether it's at the beginning or the end of the parade. And I always try to tell her, remember, those sirens mean help is coming. Help is coming. So sirens are really good news. Uh, and so I want us, and I'll tell this encouraging to you, sometimes the world is yelling at us. Sometimes stuff is going crazy in our world. Remember, our hope is in the Lord. Help is coming, and the help is with him. So in the notes, I, I have uh, number one, two, and three. This is number one. Number one, let God be your hope. Let God be your hope. Your hope is, shouldn't be institutions, in your spouses, in your paycheck, uh, in anything. Your hope should be in the Lord. But oftentimes we put our hope in other things and we get disappointed. And things go sideways. Things go weird. Second Chronicles 20, 12. I'll read the second half of that. Second Chronicles 20, 12. B, I'll start here. For we have no power to face vast armies. That is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I pray your eyes are on the Lord. I pray you're continually looking for him in these times of struggles. You're not looking at your bare pantry. You're not looking at, I can't do this. I can't do that. Your eyes should be on the Lord and your hope should be in him. Psalms 25, 15 reads. I'll read that to you. Psalms 25, 15. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Some of you might feel like your feet's in the snare. You're trapped in your house. You're trapped, and, and you can't do anything. The Lord will release us. The Lord will give us that peace that can only can come from him. Uh, but hopefully we get released soon so we can be out and about. And I'm looking forward to being with you guys again in church service soon. Point number two. It's a hard one for me. Be still and alone with God. I'll repeat that. Be still and alone with God. Psalms 46.10 reads. Most of us know this verse. We've heard it a hundred times. He says, be still and know I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted among the earth. One of my favorite prophets in the Bible is Elijah. Uh, Elijah uh, was a great prophet of the Lord, so much so that God called him to be a kind of a show-off uh, for the people. And so he went up to Mount Carmel. I'll stop there for a minute. Whenever time I hear Mount Carmel, I think of caramel or caramel. I always think of a mountain that's huge and golden and delicious. But anyway, my brain's weird. We'll move on. So uh, Elijah on the Mount Carmel, and he, he showed up, God showed up in amazing ways, burnt offering habits, and things went absolutely nuts. But after the fact, after that huge event, Elijah was kind of worried and kind of scared and kind of bummed out. And uh, God put him in a timeout. Uh, he put him in a cave and had to rest and renew and wait for the Lord to show up. Some of you might feel like Elijah right now. You might feel like you're stuck in a cave, stuck where you don't want to be. I pray you listen for God's voice. Use this time to renew and be still in his presence. We, especially in the United States, are not good at being still. We're good at going, 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 what's next, what's busy. We like to occupy ourselves with different things. I pray we learn to be still. Now I want some caramel, by the way, since I said that. Point number three. Submit to God's sovereignty. So sovereignty, what does sovereignty mean? Definitions, above or superior to all others, supreme in power, rank, and authority. 
Submit to God's sovereignty. God is in control. God has it. He has totally got it in his hands. I pray you know he has the situation. It's in his control. That doesn't mean practice safe practices. Stay home, please. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. Once again, more Isaiah. For my thoughts, this is God. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God is in control. His thoughts and workings are so much greater than we can imagine. I pray God is using this situation to bring us closer to him. So here's your homework this week. I always give homework. I pray you respond to your homework. First one, spend some quality alone time with God. That means in your aloneness, spend some time in his word and in prayer. And I say quality time, focus time on him. Continue to be in your prayer time. Schedule that 8 o'clock alarm, 8 p.m. prayer time. Be there. Set that clock. If you don't schedule time, be there praying with church together. Next is a, the new Bible study. It'll, it'll be in the link in the sermon notes. Uh, this is Reset Your Mind, Overhauling Toxic Thoughts. Be time. It's only a three-day Bible study. It will go quick and easy. So looking forward for next week. Next week is uh, is Palm Sunday. It's Communion Sunday. Uh, we're going to move the video to the sanctuary uh, this next week, and we're going to take communion together. So this week, go buy your crackers, go buy your juice, go buy whatever you need. We're going to take communion together online. You'll do it in your home. I'll do it here. Uh, that'll be fun to so we can still participate in communion uh, together. And I'm looking forward to being in the sanctuary next week. Uh, let me pray for us. To gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for technology that we can still connect online, that we can still see each other. Lord, I pray that we can connect face-to-face -face soon. But one thing is the truth we know, we can connect with you right here and now. You are always with us and always present with us. I pray we find ways to spend quality time with you. Lord, thank you for all that you're doing, even in this time, especially in this time where we're isolated from others. We're never isolated from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I say you're dismissed to go in peace. You're dismissed to go do whatever else you got to do. Bye, guys. See you next week.